Hello, my name is Jonathan Finoff. I'm a physiatrist. A phys physiatrist is a PM&R physician, or physical medicine and rehabilitation physician. Physical medicine and rehabilitation is one of the 24 medical specialties recognized by the American Board of Medical Specialties, similar to orthopedic surgery and neurology. Uh, I am an osteopath, uh, also known as a DO. So there are two main physicians within the United States. One is an allopath, which is an MD, and the other is an osteopath, which is a DO. And they have very similar medical school educations. Um, the main difference is, is that osteopaths uh, have some additional training in manual therapy techniques, and, and they tend to view things in a more holistic fashion uh, and be a little bit more open to uh, alternative care. Um, so PM&R is a very unique specialty. PM&R physicians don't focus on one disease state or organ system. Rather, they focus on maximizing the function of their patients regardless of their disease or injury. And because of this, PM&R physicians can be found in every medical setting, from private practice to large academic centers. PM&R physicians can take care of patients independently or as the leader of a large medical team. And uh, the diversity of the specialty of PM&R is what makes it such a dynamic and fulfilling specialty as a whole. I work in a seven-person orthopedic group in Lake Tahoe. Um, there are six orthopedists and myself. We focus on taking care of patients with sports-related injuries. I provide the non-operative care for these patients while my surgical colleagues, of course, do the surgical interventions. So, for example, if I have an athlete who is an avid runner and they start having pain in their Achilles tendon area, they'll come in and I'll evaluate them and determine what their problem is. And if their problem is Achilles tendon, uh, tendon problems, specifically tendinopathy, which is a degenerative condition from overuse in that area that causes swelling and pain in the Achilles tendon, then I will determine what the most appropriate treatment will be, and that can include medications, bracing, exercises. I'll work uh, as a member of the complete rehabilitation team, so we have a running analysis performed to make sure they have an appropriate gait pattern, have physical therapists work on uh, the exercise program, and um, I'll also frequently get uh, orthotics and have somebody who specializes in bracing get them set up with a night splint. If uh, the person does not respond to medications, exercise, activity modification, bracing, and orthotics, then uh, we start thinking about interventions. And I'll guide a lot of different interventions with ultrasound. So I can use uh, ultrasounds to diagnose the condition as well as guide a needle and uh, inject various growth factors into the area to try to stimulate a tissue regenerative response. Um, and if all of that doesn't work, then I can refer them to my orthopedic colleagues who can perform a tendon debridement type of surgery and gradually get them back into their activities. So that's sort of the spectrum of, of uh, care that we can provide all the way from non-operative uh, through operative care in my particular setting. I'm also the director of sports medicine for the local hospital system. And in, in this role, I coordinate the coverage of local mass participation sports events like the Lake Tahoe Marathon. Um, and various biking events and triathlons. I also direct the medical coverage of the three local high schools, which include scheduling athletic trainers to work in the training room at the high schools and cover events, and also coordinating the coverage of contact sporting events by physicians. We provide community lectures uh, on sports injury prevention and treatment, and we perform pre-participation physicals for local athletes. So that's some of the other uh, roles that I serve in this particular job setting. So there are a lot of advantages uh, of working in a private practice setting, and I've, I've, had the, I've had the opportunity to work in several different settings, including large academic centers, such as the Mayo Clinic, as well as in private practice settings. And, and so I'm able to look at both sides of the coin and, and, uh, and determine which has advantages and disadvantages in specific areas. And from my standpoint, in the private practice setting, it's nice to uh, be able to make decisions in a more rapid manner. In a, large dis in a large institution, frequently you have to go through a lot of different committees, uh, even to do minor changes. And, and so that allows uh, the practice to be more dynamic and more nimble, so you can change uh, 
patient flow patterns within your practice, which patients you're going to take care of, uh, the referral patterns that will be coming into your practice, advertising, and so on, relatively easily in a private practice setting. I also have control over my schedule, so what patients I see, the hours that I work, when I take vacation, what conferences I go to, etc. The private practice setting also facilitates uh, more of a physician-patient bond. So patients in my area come in specifically to see me, uh, and I develop a good physician-patient relationship, and they continue to see me and their family see me over time. In a lot of large academic tertiary referral centers, the patient is predominantly coming in to be seen at the center as opposed to coming in to see a particular individual. And they may or may not end up following up with you because they'll often go back to wherever they came from and that often is not in the same area um, where, you're, where the academic center is. So I, I like that personal relationship that you can develop with, uh, with your patients. But there are a lot of advantages to the academic setting or uh, larger practice setting as well. Um, they tend to be a more stable practice. If one person leaves a large medical center, it's unlikely that that will have any significant influence on the center, whereas if you have a major player in a six or seven person private practice group leave, then that significantly affects the overhead of all the remaining physicians. Um, academic uh, centers also tend to have better benefits as far as insurance for uh, their employees. They uh, do paid vacation, um, the, the um, disability insurance, malpractice insurance is typically covered by larger uh, practices and in academic settings. So I think that uh, in general uh, there's more stability and more benefits uh, from a retirement and insurance and those types of things package in an academic or uh, large center um, as opposed to private practice where you have more ability to adjust your schedule and have a more dynamic practice in terms of changing things. So those are some of the pros and cons of the, of the different practice uh, settings. My role within the care team, um, as I described before, really is taking care of the non-operative uh, problems that our patients have, um, and then also coordinating the local sports medicine uh, coverage for events and pre-participation physicals, etc. And so my patient population, some of them uh, have traumatic injuries, um, but a lot of them have overuse injuries. Um, I would say that in general I see uh, between 20 and 25 patients a day. Uh, I have three and a half days uh, a week that I work in the clinic and the other day and a half I use as administrative time to coordinate all of my administrative responsibilities as the director of sports medicine. Um, and if somebody has uh, a problem that uh, is more significant than can be taken care of by the limited resources of our small community, then I'll refer them to a larger uh, medical center such as down in Reno, Nevada or over in Sacramento, California. Now, as far as my education and career path, I, I'm from Boulder, Colorado originally, and I went to undergraduate in Boulder at uh, University of Colorado, and my degree was in molecular, cellular, and developmental biology. Then I went to medical school at University of New England in Biddeford Pool, Maine, which is in southern Maine on the coast near Kennebunkport. Uh, I, ha I uh, attended my internship in Philadelphia at Delaware Valley Medical Center and then completed my residency in physical medicine and rehabilitation at the University of Utah. I then went to the Mayo Clinic where I completed a sports medicine fellowship and following that I went back to the University of Utah and was on faculty there for a year. Then I was recruited by Utah State University to be their head team physician and so I went up to Logan, Utah and worked for Utah State University. Uh, and in a private practice setting for approximately four years. I proceeded from there to Bend, Oregon um, and worked uh, at one of the orthopedic clinics affiliated with the US Ski Team for a year before being recruited by the Mayo Clinic to go back and work there in their sports medicine center. At the Mayo Clinic I uh, not only worked in the sports medicine center but directed several of their programs including their con sports concussion program, their exertional leg pain program, and I served on a a lot of different committees. I was the assistant 
program director for their sports medicine fellowship and the chair of the Ask Mayo Experts uh, Committee from the Department of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation. So I had a lot of different administrative roles as well as education uh, and uh, clinical roles there. Um, I was uh, recruited to come out to uh, Lake Tahoe and be the director of sports medicine for this hospital system as well as join uh, an orthopedic group that is very uh, heavily affiliated with the United States ski team. And I've been a U.S. ski team physician for the last decade and so it was a good career move for me to increase my affiliation with the U.S. ski team and uh, to move into a uh, higher role from an administrative standpoint uh, which I have enjoyed. I chose sports medicine um, specifically because I grew up uh, in a very athletic population and I participated in a lot of different sports and eventually was uh, a national caliber ski racer and uh, and became a professional bike racer for a bunch of years and because of various injuries I had and uh, people that I um, raced with I thought that sports medicine would be a great fit for me and when I looked at the various specialties that you could practice sports, sports medicine with, uh, I felt that physical medicine rehabilitation gave me the background um, and uh, experience I needed in order to be uh, an exceptional sports medicine physician. And so that's why I chose physical medicine rehabilitation. I felt that it really provided a musculoskeletal background to prepare me for sports medicine. Um, so that really covers everything uh, from my standpoint. Uh, I hope that I have provided you with a better understanding of the diverse specialty of physical medicine and rehabilitation. I invite you to learn more by listening to my fellow members' stories. For more information, contact the Academy at info at aapmr.org or visit our website at www.aapmr.org. Thank you.